This combination and evolution of ideological worldviews became undeniable as Britain and China began talks in the 1980s concerning the future of Hong Kong. As the lease on the land of the new territories was fast approaching its end, the future of this region became an important concern for all parties involved. And after many talks, the future of Hong Kong was established in writing with the signing of the One Country, Two Systems Agreement in 1984, stating that Hong Kong would revert back to Chinese rule. However, it would retain its economic and political freedom for the next 50 years following the enactment of this agreement in 1997. As the future became solidified, fears arose from the Hong Kongers regarding their political freedoms. These fears find their roots in the pro-democracy protests of 1989 in Beijing, resulting in the murder of what recent estimates are numbering near 10,000 protesters in what has come to be known as the Tiananmen Square Massacre. It was the results of this protest that sparked fear and led to deep-seated mistrust of the Chinese government in Hong Kong and led to the need for security measures to be taken before the 1997 handover. The measures taken were the establishment of Hong Kong's very own Basic Law and Bill of Rights, officially validated by the Chinese government in 1990. And much as modern England is trying to assist the Hong Kongers via legislation, so England in the 90s tried to assist Hong Kong before the handover. In 1992, Chris Pratton, the last British governor of Hong Kong, gave proposals for democratic reform with the goal of widening the voter base in Hong Kong, the proposals being passed into law in 1994. However, this did not actually guarantee universal suffrage. As the handover of 1997 commenced, Chinese military entered Hong Kong for the first time in over 150 years. And it was on this day the Union Jack was lowered for the last time. In this new China overseen Hong Kong, changes have been made in rapid succession, setting a new precedence for the future of Hong Kong politics and government involvement. This itself being met with great opposition from the people of Hong Kong. 2002. The first of these events is the arrest and prosecution of 16 members of the spiritual movement known as Falun Gong. This particular movement was outlawed in China a few years prior in 1999, but remains legal in Hong Kong. These 16 people were arrested for creating a public obstruction while outside China's liaison office in 2002. 2003. After 2002 and the Chinese-imposed leader of Hong Kong, Tung Chi Hua, attempting to pass an anti-subversion law known as Article 23, this particular legislation allowing for the arrest of individuals found guilty of treason, succession, sedition, and or subversion. Sound familiar? 500,000 Hong Kong residents took to the streets in protest of this legislation, resulting in the redactment of the proposal. 2004. China establishes that it must approve of any changes sought by Hong Kong to alter or expand their election laws, resulting in the right to veto further advances toward universal suffrage. 2005. 25 members of the Legislative Council of Hong Kong, LEDCO for short, visit mainland China, resulting in 11 of the 25 being banned for 16 years. This same year, Hong Kong Chief Executive Tong Shi Hua resigns and is succeeded by Donald Tsang. 2006. Chief Executive Donald Tseng is elected for a five-year term, unveiling his plans for a full democracy later that year. 2007. Hong Kongers are assured by China to obtain universal suffrage by 2020, beginning with the right to elect their own chief executive by 2017. 2014. 800,000 Hong Kongers take part in an unofficial vote revealing that more than 90% of people desire a voice in choosing candidates for chief executive elections. The Chinese government then dismissed the vote as illegal, resulting in an immense protest of tens of thousands of people. China's response was the revoking of a fully democratic 2017 election, stating that only the candidates will be ones approved by China. This in turn resulted in protesters occupying the city center for nearly a month with nearly 100,000 people protesting. 2015. Despite more protests and talks, the Chinese government still outlawed six pro-democracy candidates, still holding their stance regarding the 2017 elections. 2016. Hong Kong's High Court disqualifies two pro-democratic legislators, Sixtus Leung and Yu Wai-ching, after they refused to pledge allegiance to China during their inauguration ceremony. Later this year, Chief Executive Leung Chung-ying announces he will not be up for re-election in 2017. 2017. Carrie Lam is sworn in by Chinese President Xi Jinping as Chief Executive of Hong Kong. 2019. Pro-democracy and anti-Beijing protests of an unprecedented scale break out in response to an extradition law. Protests to the tune 
of one million people. 2020, protests break out again in response to the implementation of a security bill by the Chinese government. As one reads news about the security bill, the similarities between it and the proposed Article 23 of 2002 becomes increasingly uncanny. Suspicions arise when confronted with the fact that for the very first time, though Hong Kong is officially bilingual, China only recognizes the Mandarin copy of the legislation, despite there being significant differences in the diction present within these two documents. Is this the same legislation? Perhaps slightly altered? Regardless if it is simply a second draft of old propositions, the results are the same. The silencing of Hong Kong's freedom of speech and the Hong Kongers' push for democracy in universal suffrage. So what are we supposed to do? How does one respond to this oppression? The robbing of freedoms most likely you who are watching this video are accustomed to. Well, the response is not to be embarrassed of your privilege, nor sink back into the reality buffer that we call entertainment, but to say something. I don't expect anyone to buy a plane ticket and go participate, though this guy sure did, but to talk about this. Post about it on your story and your page. Share this video on ones like it on your Facebook. Tweet about this. If we can cause social change to the degree that we've seen these past months, we can help with this too. How, you might ask? Well, Chinese culture is one of saving face or avoiding public embarrassment for all involved. If this becomes big enough news, China will make changes. But we have to be caring enough to say something. People are counting on you because your voice holds power. And I do not just mean the general you, but you, us, we can make this change happen for those who have been crying out for help. And you don't need to donate your money nor immense amounts of your time, but you just have to move your thumbs and care about somebody. When you do, post what you think and feel with the hashtag fight for Hong Kong and hashtag Hong Kong protests and post the link to this video and ones like it below so more people can hear and see the systematic injustice happening right under our noses. This is not tomorrow's problem nor just yesterday's news but our responsibility right now. The Hong Kongers are crying out. Do not let their cries fall on deaf ears. Do not let apathy win in your life. Say something. Post your support for Hong Kong with the hashtag fight for Hong Kong and hashtag Hong Kong protests. What is going on guys? Thank you so much for making it to part three of three of this Hong Kong crisis series. Now that we've made it to the end of this video series, do something about it. Right after this video, go on social media, go on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, it doesn't matter, and post something about this with the hashtags previously mentioned. They're in the description below, go check them out. Also in the description below are links to other videos about this same topic. So go and continue to educate yourself on how you can better advocate for these oppressed people right now. And how you can advocate for them today is just to say something. So don't be lazy, don't be selfish, move your thumbs and you will literally make a world of difference. As always, like the video, leave something down in the comments below. Thoughts, feelings, reactions, something I missed. Subscribe and keep on doing more with your life with today. And let that include talking about the people of Hong Kong. And I will see you guys in the next one.